So this video is kind of an important one. If you're planning to use any of the new features that Zoom has either just released or is releasing in the future, I'm not even sure when you're watching this video what new features Zoom has just come up with. But um, in 2020, there was one big update that allowed participants to self-select their breakout rooms. Then there was another big update where the reactions buttons were updated and the raise hand button moved to a different location. And it's really hard when you want to facilitate something or you run an activity where everybody has a different view of their Zoom window. And some of them might not have the newest version and therefore cannot see a feature in the same place or not at all. So usually when I, um, when I host an event or host an experience, I always send out a reminder, please make sure that you have the most recent Zoom update installed with an instructional video on how to do it. I also have my Zoom guide that I think you've seen already where I go through it step by step on how to make sure that you're on the most recent version. But there is something that I just found on the Zoom website. You can force your participants to update before they can even join your next meeting. Yeah. So I'll show you where to do that, number one. Number two, if you're planning to use this setting on the website, make sure you communicate it with your participants so they're aware that it might take them five to 10 minutes to update their Zoom app, maybe have to restart, find the login information again before they can join your event. So it definitely takes some extra time. And if somebody just clicks at the start time, the link to join, they will be prompted to update and might show up 10 minutes late. So first of all, let me show you where that is. And if you have been on the Zoom website, you know you have on the left side this uh, part where it says personal settings. And that's kind of the settings that we've talked about most of the time because that is for your um, personal user in your Zoom account to decide all the settings. So some um, Zoom accounts, you have several users, you have several hosts, so it's a different pricing option. And then there's a different place to add and change some settings, and they are under account management and account settings. So that's the important thing that we need to go to because there we have a few more options to control what's happening on Zoom. So let's click that right now. And as you can see, it actually looks almost the same as the personal settings. So a lot of the settings here, you could apply to everyone on your account. And the personal settings is just for your personal account. So your login information, somebody else might have a different email address, different password to sign into your Zoom account. So all of those settings on the account settings will apply to everyone. And um, as I was scrolling through this, let me actually pull this out a bit. So we see this menu here. There is an admin option. So now we're just browsing around and then came across this setting here. Require users to update the client. So when I click this switch, you get this little pop-up, enable require users to update the, update the client. This setting will be enabled for all groups and users. So we're going to enable this, and then we get a whole bunch of settings down here. So first, let's have a look at the top. Apply to users within account only, or apply to users within account and external participants. So. This first one is if you do have several users on your account, so the host would need to update before they can start the meeting. That's kind of the first one. But if you want to use a new feature and you want everyone to definitely be on the newest version, you check this box and now everybody will be forced, depending on the operating system, to update to the version that is specified here. So we could have a look at which version do we want to be required? And I think by default now, Zoom 5.0 is being forced to all of them, um, but that is maybe the lowest I would recommend because 5.0 was the one where they did a lot of security updates, where they introduced the breakout rooms. So if we wanted to select that, and 
probably the zero uh, 5.0.2 because they did some security and bug fixes um, for Windows same thing for Mac we could decide that is this uh, iOS um, same thing 5.0 Android 5.0 if you're watching this in the future and maybe there is a version 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, who knows when you're watching this, you can always check what has been updated in the release notes. So if you just Google Zoom release notes, uh, you should find this website, uh, actually even one step further, release notes, and then you can see by date what has been updated, but also if you go release notes for Zoom client, and then you can decide uh, Windows or Mac or iOS or Android. Click, let's say, for example, Mac OS. And then you can all, number one, you can see if there's any upcoming releases. You can see what has been changed, what's the newest version, what's been changed there. And if you scroll down here, like it's a long list of all the changes that, changes that they've been making. And if we look at what's like the next one that is coming up um june version 5.11 um is there anything interesting that they changed here not really not really not really and here is this five point Yeah, this is also 5.0 is also where they started adding a lot of the security features. So if you're the host, you definitely always want to be on the most up-to-date version. But this is how you could look what has been changed at which version. And now that we have enabled this here and click Save, the next time you host a Zoom meeting, everyone will get a pop-up that says, um, before you can join this meeting, you need to update, uh, click here. And they need to download the new app. They need to install it, probably add the password for their computer. It's gonna run the installation program, gonna take a couple minutes, then they're gonna be asked to restart Zoom. And then depending on where they get the link or the login information for your meeting, they have to go find that again and enter that again to be able to join. So again, think about it uh, as an extra five to 10 minutes. But I believe if you tell everyone ahead of time, hey, click this link a few minutes before, um, like actually change the start time to a few minutes early or plan that you're not going to start until maybe 10 minutes after, then you can make sure that everybody has the same features and looks at the same thing. So let me know how that goes and I'll see you in the next video.